Hello guys, welcome back to the Civil Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Civil Engineering videos. Today our lecture is about the combined stresses. Combined stresses means that we have two different types of the stresses produced in any structural member. It may be either in beam, column or slab or maybe in footing. So most of the times we deal with the single stresses. It means that let's consider a, in the assembly supported beam with uniformly distributed load. So due to this uniform distributed load, we create, uh, it creates the bending moment in this beam. So we just have the bending stresses in this beam, we represent it by sigma b. Because we only have bending stresses because of this load. This is the only bending in this beam. While let's consider this other type of the stresses, it is just the column and the axial load acting at the center of this beam. So due to this axial load, we only have compressive stresses in this column. We represent it by C, sigma C. We have only compressive stresses. So these are called the single stresses in any member. While now this is the combined stresses in which we have two different combination of the stresses. Now I will try to explain the combined stresses concept with the help of example. Let's consider uh, this is column, this is any column supported at the ground. So we fix support. And uh, this is the cross section of this column. So let's consider that this is the centroid of this column, the centroidal axis of this column. And we and to explain the combined stresses concept, I will take two different types of the loads. One is the load which is acting at the centroid of this column and I represent it by P. The other load is acting away from the centroid axis of the column, I represent it by F. And due to this F, it, it creates the bending because this force is not acting along the centroid of the column which is away from the centroid of the column so because we have some eccentricity for this loading so that's why we have some bending because of this loading and I represent the distance from the centroid to the load to the eccentric load is R so I have two different types of the stresses here one is the compressive stresses which is only due to this load which is acting at the center of the column so compressive stresses is P over A which is area of the cross section which is B into H and P is the axial load which is acting at the center of the column. Now this load creates a moment in this column so I can represent that the moment will be equal to F into R where F is the load acting which is called a centric load in this case and R is the moment arm for this load. So and due to this bending moment we have bending stresses. So bending stresses can be represented by this formula which is a very famous relation m y over i so by putting the m value from this data the bending stresses comes out to be m is equal to the phi f into r so f into r into y divided by i which is the moment of inertia of this column so we have two different types of stresses one is the bending stresses and one is the compressive stresses so this stresses are known as the combined stresses in this column. So I can present the combination of two stresses. One is the compressive stresses and one is the bending stresses. And, and in reality, we always have combined stresses acting on any structural members. We don't have any stresses that is either axial or either bending. We always have the combination of two stresses. So I can write this that the combination of stresses. One is the uh, compressive stresses, P over A, and one is the bending stresses, so I can write the bending stress in this case if R into Y over I, where I is the moment of inertia, R is the moment of force acting from the uh, centroid, and Y is the distance from the center to the point of interest where I want to find the stresses. For example, in this case, I want the, the, from the uh, to find the stresses at this point, so the distance will be this is called the Y, where it changes. It depends on my interest where I, find, where I want to find my stresses. So by adding these two stresses, we can find the combination of two stresses, which is called the combined stresses. Now similarly consider any simply supported beam, there is a simply supported beam, and the load is acting, is the uniform load acting on this beam. So due to this UDL, we have bending stresses in this beam, right? I represent it by sigma b, and the other load is acting at the centroid of this beam centroidal axis of this beam. So one is the axial stresses, we call it the compressive stresses, and one is the bending stresses. So 
So the total stresses will be combination of the compressor stresses and the bending stresses. So we have two different type of stresses. That's why we call it the combined stresses. And in reality, we always have combined stresses on any in structure member. We don't have any fixed stresses, either it's bending or uh, exit stresses. But always we have dominant uh, conditions like uh, in beam, we always consider the bending stresses as the dominant stresses. In column, we consider the exit stresses are the dominant stresses. Hope you guys understand. And don't forget to subscribe my channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you.